uh, as has been uh, as we've been expecting. 80 points, 85 points lower, 80, uh, 18,038 is what you have uh, as we begin this session. Nilesh Shah is a market master of the day, managing director at Kodak Mahindra Asset Management Company. Nilesh, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, last but one day for the end of the year, and we look, in, look into 2023. Uh, so, season's greetings first of all to you, to your family, your team, from all of us here at CNBC TV 18. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Wish you and your viewers a very season's greetings. Uh, Nilesh, I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Sorry. I, or maybe my. I'm on unmute. Okay, him. I think, we okay, all right, him. it's just my, my earpiece. Uh, thanks for that, Nilesh. It's the end of the year, you know. <laughs> Everything stops no, working one by one. <laughs> all right, Nilesh, uh, uh, you know, I want to start with that Canada Bank conversation because I think uh, that, that's interesting. You know, they told us yesterday, we had the management of Canada Bank with us, they said, you know, they raised interest rates a few weeks ago uh, for 7% uh, for senior citizens, 7.5%, in three weeks they got a lakh crores in deposits. Uh, they said, of course, that uh, gives them great ability to lend and keep up with 15-20% uh, lending growth. But w is there a scramble for deposits as you're seeing or how do you read this broadly? So, Prashant, if we look at the overall liquidity in banking system at the beginning of the year on 1st April, it was about 8 lakh crore. And then over a period of time, it kept on dwindling at about 2 lakh crore. Now, clearly, when liquidity becomes scarier, scarcer, then obviously there will be scramble for deposits, there will be higher interest rates. So my feeling is that right now, you know, from asset side, market will focus on the liability side of the bank. Banks with better franchisee, better ability to raise deposits at a lower cost will do well. Nilesh, uh, good morning and thanks for being with us on the channel. Hope you have a great 2023 and wish you the best. You, your team, your family everyone at Kotak. Um, how are you feeling about the new year in terms of asset allocation? Do you think fixed income will give better returns compared to equities? What's the best way to approach it this year? So this year, the gap between return of equity fund and a debt fund will be fairly narrower. In equity, in order to make money, people will have to buy on dips. People will have to buy on correction. They'll have to pick up right stocks. So it will be suffice to say that making money in 2023 will be difficult and only a disciplined investor will be able to make money. Okay, Disciplined investor will be able to make money uh, not only in 2023, I believe uh, across uh, the board. Nilesh, uh, always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, equities itself, I wanted your thoughts on active versus passive funds because not a lot of fund managers were able to beat uh, the indices, uh, the benchmarks this year. Do you think it's going to get incrementally difficult in 2023? Or maybe 2023 will be more of an active fund manager's market than a passive fund manager's? So again, are we comparing apple to apple or apple to oranges? Indexes have more than 10% weightage in scripts like HDFC, Bank Reliance Industries. Fund managers aren't allowed to go beyond 10%. Indexes include and exclude stocks at the closing prices. But fund managers have to pay the you know, impact cost. The third thing is cash balance. Index does not keep any cash. Fund managers provide daily redemption. More importantly, globally, total return index are compared with cross of fees. In India, we compare it with net of fees. So these are the four factors which one has to make in adjustments while evaluating active versus passive. Now, again, there is a popular perception that fund managers are not generating alpha. Now, look at any small cap, mid cap fund. They all have generated alpha. So effectively, we are talking about a large cap fund where probably some funds have not generated alpha. Now, again, looking at one year, performance of a fund for alpha generation will be a little bit difficult because there are many stocks in indices which fund managers are not comfortable buying because of valuation. Now, this call may go wrong in a year, but it may play out over three, four years. We did see in 2017, when we didn't invest in an IT company, which became 4% of mid-cap index. 2017, we underperformed. Today, same mid-cap fund is generating 7% outperformance over benchmark index because we didn't invest in that IT company. 
So I think there will be scope for both active and passive fund managers. As long as we add value to our investors on a longer term basis and not on a daily basis, there will be space for active fund managers. <clears throat> Nilesh, uh, just to um, sort of pick up from what you told us last time as well when you joined us, uh, you were uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, the second quarter earnings and uh, you, you, you told us how maybe uh, generally there is a bit of deterioration at the marginal level, right, uh, for companies in terms of uh, pro uh, profitability metrics, cash flows, etc. Uh, as we wrap up the third quarter, uh, what can you tell us? I mean, what are you picking up? Because, I mean, you, uh, you your investment team would be interacting with so many companies, right? So you have a bird's eye view of uh, how things are really progressing as we uh, wrap up this quarter. Incrementally, how are things looking? So, Prishan, clearly September 22 EBITDA margin was lower than June 20 COVID impacted EBITDA margins. Clearly, there was a hit on inflation and there was effect of slowdown at the bottom end of consumption. Now, there was hope that Diwali and other festival season will pull up the demand. So far, we are getting fairly mixed signals. Companies, manufacturers, which are focused at the top end of the market, they are doing reasonably well. Their challenge is securing supply chain so that they can deliver to the customers. However, companies which are focused on bottom end of the consumption, they are living on a month-on-month -month basis. They are not very sure of demand recovery. Our feeling is that in December 22 quarter, the hit taken thanks to the stock uh, value, stock uh, correction coming in will be over, but the volume growth is something which we will be critically watching. Clearly, the market is discounting rebound in the EBITDA margins to June 22 quarter level rather than sustenance of September 22 EBITDA margin levels. Uh, the IT sector, Nilesh, was the worst hit this year. Do you think the fortunes will change in 2023? So for IT sector to run, not only the, the bogies cannot lead the IT sector, the engine has to run. And the engine in our context is NASDAQ 100. Clearly, there are tech-dominated companies in NASDAQ 100. If they don't bottom out and start performing, it's unlikely that global investors will be comfortable investing in Indian IT sector. Domestic investors also can look at IT sector based on their valuation, but to some extent, their decision will be influenced by how global factors play out. So in our opinion, over the next three to six months, IT sector should bottom out in US and correspondingly in India. Investing in IT sector at this point of time is like catching a falling knife you know there will be some blood on hand, but if you can catch the falling knife, eventually it will make money for you. So this is accumulation phase in IT rather than outright buying. Right. You know, uh, given all the things that happened in 2022, uh, it was rather choppy. Uh, the only two clean themes that worked through the year, one was defense, the other were PSU banks. Do you have any themes in mind that would work or could work for 2023? So, one sector where we are reasonably bullish is infrastructure. We believe before election, every government will focus on building up of infrastructure. This budget, like last budget, there will be enhanced allocation to infrastructure sector. And even the private investment seems to be reviving, albeit it is taking baby steps. Put all these things together, a higher allocation in the budget, a nascent revival in private sector investment and speed of execution, courtesy 2024 election in mind, infrastructure sector could do well. Two sectors where we have to accumulate now, they may not bottom out today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, but certainly over the next six months, they could provide good entry point is IT and pharma. Both sectors have been derated significantly. The volume growth, our value growth in both those sectors are now in line with expectations of the market could and, and could actually surprise on the upside. So IT and pharma provides great accumulation opportunity over the next three to six months. And infrastructure sector is something which one can invest right now with a view to outperform market in 2023. 
So IT and Pharma, you're saying, provides great uh, opportunity over the next uh, three to six months, you said? Yes. Okay, that's great to hear. Uh, what about some of these pockets that have done well, but perhaps not as well as what people were expecting, right? Autos, for example, two-wheelers are still struggling. There are some pockets of value, but other than that, uh, the entire sector is, I mean, it's a sort of lackluster for the last many weeks and months. Your thoughts? So on the auto sector, clearly there is a differentiator coming where top-end, mid-end cars are selling like a hot cake and their problem is supply chain management. With the correction in commodity prices, margins have started expanding over there and the waiting period is still fairly long. On the other hand, at the mid to lower end of the products, there is lack of demand the sales are still less than last year and the benefit of commodity price correction needs to be passed to consumer to revive the demand. So we believe passenger vehicle companies will do well, whereas the two-wheeler company will have, sim will have some kind of struggle. Uh, on the auto sector, I think the opportunity also lies in auto components which are related to auto sector. There are many companies which are not only catering Indian market, but also becoming part of global supply chain management. As globally, there is revival of auto sector, these companies will also benefit. So be selective in auto sector, passenger vehicle companies, export-oriented auto component companies that should outperform the market in 2023. All right. Uh, <clears throat> no, fair enough. You know, Nilesh, let me just uh, take a quick stock of markets. Just coming back to you, 73 points lower is what we have on the index. Uh, so things are kind of getting uh, uh, not uh, not very much by way of change. Market breadth now, I think now is a better time to look at overall market breadth down uh, 74 uh, in, in favor of uh, declines. 1,100 stocks are lower, 840 stocks are uh, higher. Sriram Finance is, uh, I mean, this is peculiar. There's a 6, 6.5% cut now. 1,303 uh, on uh, Sriram Finance is uh, what is uh, coming through. Uh, but that's the only large one uh, which is down. Otherwise, not very much, at least not backed by volumes. Uh, Nilesh, so many companies that we've spoken with recently, right? I mean, Sriram Finance is one. Uh, they said that new CV sales are kind of very slow. Uh, Secondhand, people are able to afford, it's more viable. Sundaram Finance told us something very similar. Uh, Post-festive has been pretty muted. We had the management of WeMart with us, tier two, tier three. Uh, they were talking about perhaps revival, uh, you know, next year. Uh, right now, it's uh, pretty slow and so many others. Uh, over the last one week, last four, five days, uh, are, are you worried that this uh, bottom of the uh, sort of uh, pyramid slowdown that we've all been aware of, we've been talking about, that is getting a little more entrenched now? Nilesh, what's your sense? So undoubtedly, that is one of the cause of concern for our economy. Now, there are two explanations which are being given. One explanation is that people had borrowed money during COVID time, and now they're repairing their balance sheet by repaying borrowing and hence they are not consuming. If that is true, then certainly there will be a day when bottom end consumption will bottom out. People would have repaired their balance sheet and they'll start spending. The second thing also which is being said is that there is genuine problem where inflation has hit bottom end of the consumption. There is a you know, lack of growth in income in real sense at the bottom end of consumption. And hence, there is a need to support them. I don't know which one will prevail, but clearly we are watching December 22 quarterly results. We are talking with companies, especially engaged in rural India and at the bottom end of consumption, to trying to figure out where will this bottom out. It's now almost a year where bottom end of consumption is growing at a lower pace, it is growing negatively. It's selling lower than last year's volume. Right. Do you think some of the global cyclicals will make a comeback now that uh, China is opening up? I mean, we have seen some traction build in the metal stocks uh, this week. Uh, do you think that continues into 2023? So metal is not really our forte. They are, there are too many variables which make the price swing quite uh, dramatic. And it's humanly impossible to predict those variables. 
in metal space where we have concentrated, we have focused upon companies where operating leverage kicks in. Suppose if there is a company which has borrowed debt to set up capacity, there will be a period where capacity utilization will be low, debt burden will be high, and the stock price or equity valuation will be depressed. If we can go and capture those kind of companies, we not only benefit from operating leverage, but also if commodity prices benefits. That strategy by and large does work well for us to create value or to make return out of metal stocks. And I will recommend investors to focus on companies which have operating leverage in global cyclical sectors. One final question, Nilesh, because we're heading into this discussion next. So I just wanted your thoughts on it. On the PSU banking space, we're going to be speaking with one of the biggest bankers in the country. And, you know, PSU banks have been, have had a super year, one that we haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, do you think that this loan growth, this double-digit high uh, teens loan growth that most PSU banks have reported, is it something that can sustain? And uh, is this a space that where investors can look at even beyond the SBIs, you know, in the broader markets as well? Undoubtedly, PSU banks have been a bright spot in our market in 2022. But now their valuation differentia vis-a-vis private sector bank has narrowed down. Now the expectations have been built in of a cleaner balance sheet, of a double-digit credit growth, and a strong liability franchise, which gives them huge advantage in terms of cost of borrowing. As long as PSU banks are able to deliver on these three expectations, I think people will look beyond SBI into PSU banking sector. But mind you, there is a fair amount of supply potentially coming up in PSU banking sector as many of the banks will require growth capital if they want to fund double-digit credit growth. My feeling is that in 2022, PSU banks were exceptional performer. 2023, some of them will be exceptional performer, but most of them will be market performer. Hmm. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Nimesh, uh, Nilesh, for joining in and giving us uh, all those details. I mean, we wish you and your team a very, very happy 2023, may the cult of equity, as you always say, only grow. Thank you. Thank you. With that, let's move on to uh, the next discussion that we have uh, for you. Aether Industries is the next corporate we're speaking to. Recent news flow suggests that there has been buying activity among dealers that's gotten muted on account of a conscious attempt to keep inventory levels low. We do have with us Saman Desai, who's the founder and director of the company, joining in. Aman, uh, Thank you for joining in. Uh, 